Welcome to iLecture Online. Here we're going to see an example why this notation, this function notation is so important because we're going to take a look at the slope of the function. Now here the function is defined as being equal to 1 half x plus 2 and of course everybody knows that this looks like a straight line where we have y equals mx plus b so it's clear that m is equal to 1 half so the slope is 1 half, no question there. But let me show you how to use this notation and how to understand why the notation is important. First of all, we have the straight line right here, which is defined by our y equals mx plus b, or the function f of x equals 1 half x plus 2. We pick any two arbitrary points on the curve, we call the first one x1 and the second one x2, at least the x coordinates of those points are x1 and x2. And then we can see we have the corresponding y's of each of those two points, which is y1 and y2. And how do we find y1 and y2? We find it by evaluating the function f by replacing every x by x sub 1. So this is a compact notation to write that the value for y that you get when you plug in x1 for x in our function is done this way. And that's how we write the notation. So then if we want to figure out the rise, the rise here is going to be equal to y2 minus y1. So how do we find y2 and y1? Well, we can define y2 as being equal to the function evaluated when x equals x2. And of course, the function is right here. So I'm going to replace every x by x sub 2. And so this is equal to 1 half x2 plus 2. Of course, we can do the same for the second point. We can find y1 doing exactly the same thing. y1 is equal to the function evaluated when x is replaced by x sub 1, which is 1 half x sub 1 plus 2. So now, when we take the difference between those two values, that's the rise of the function, so this is going to be equal to 1 half x2 plus 2 minus, I'll put in brackets here, 1 half x1 plus 2. And notice, when we subtract the 2 from this 2, the 2's cancel out, so this gives me 1 half x2 minus 1 half x1, which is 1 half the difference between x2 minus x1, like that. And that is the rise between those two points. Now the run. How much is that run going from there to there? So the run can be defined by taking the second point and subtracting from that the first point. It's the difference between the two x values. So now when we get to slope, the slope by definition is equal to the rise divided by the run. And in this case, the rise has been defined as 1 half times x2 minus x1. And the run has been defined as x2 minus x1. Of course, you can see that the x2 minus x1 cancels, which means that the slope is equal to 1 half. And so you say, well, why did I do all that? Why was it even necessary? I could simply take this equation and realize that m is equal to 1 half. But it's important that we learn how to write this notation. That we can see that the y value is simply obtained by getting the function and evaluate it for the particular x value we put in. Remember, we plug in an x and we pull out a y. Plug in an x1, we get a y1. Plug in an x2, we get a y2. And then we can realize that that's the notation we've been using to find the y2 value, we evaluate the function when x equals x sub 2, we replace every x by x sub 2, we do the same for y sub 1, replace every x by x sub 1, and then the difference between the two y values is the rise, and that's how we calculate the rise, divided by the run, and we get 1 half. It's simply becoming used to the notation. After a while, when you do this for a while, you look at that and go, oh yeah, of course, that's simple. I understand that. And that's important that you're not scared by looking at these things and going, oh, what in the world does that mean? Well, it means exactly that. And that is how we use the notation. And that's a special case, of course, because in this case, we showed you how that special notation also gives you the slope. That's important, too. And that is how it's done. It was still confusing. Maybe. Still confusing? It was. Oh, you mean when you were a student? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a new thing. Definitely, 
the chapter on function notation. That's why the whole chapter is devoted to the notation of how to write that and how to get the information out of it. It's big because it's that's what we do a lot. I think what bothered me was that the little one and two because you've never seen that before. Maybe for calculus, uh, y sub one, y sub two, and then you have all these ones and twos and equal signs right. floating everywhere. But then realize what you just said. You saw this a lot in calculus. Guess what? This is getting you ready for. Yes, it's the next step, right? You need to understand this before we get into calculus. Calculus uses this kind of notation all the time. So you definitely, this is preparation for the next course and the next course, of course. All right.